Welcome to EDC Journeys. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. What's going on EDC people and what's our journey this time? Well, it is finally the Wee Banter. This is a cool EDC knife. Let's go over the specs, get them out of the way. Okay, I'm just gonna go through them. The blade length is uh, 73 millimeters. The handle length is 91.4 millimeters. Overall, 165.1. Or so okay the weight let's grab a quick weight the website says 2.6 ounces we will see what this says this says 2.8 ounces okay close enough for me at 80.5 grams so that is a fairly light knife great for EDC perfect weight uh, the blade is beautiful it's in s35 vn i think it's stamped somewhere yeah right there can you see that s35 vn uh, it is made by ben peterson there's his maker's mark with the what is up guys like every other reviewer says um, my fingerprint's getting all over the satin stone washed blade already. I love the blade shape. It's, it's, it's almost like a traditional spear point. Um, it's got a high flat. It's flat ground, but with that high flat and with the, well not with the high flat, but with the high, with, you know, width of the blade. Which, let's, uh, where's my caliper? Caliper. There you are. Okay, so 26.3, 26.4, follow 26. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. The stock thickness is 2.54 millimeters. I already took the, this measurement because I wanted this video to go a little bit faster. Um, now, the website lists the behind the edge because that's still a, a, a measurement that I have a hard time getting as 0.43 millimeters okay so so there you go uh the handle is made of g10 it comes in two different variants right now the ben blue as you see here which would be the one that i prefer especially being that this is the banter uh the black one is all black including the blade has the black coating on it um so yeah so i talked about the depth 20 you know 26 millimeters or so um i i did measure already from the high grind okay from here to here at 19.5 millimeters again but because of the height of this blade at 26 the the 19.5 with a straight grind it, it is not bad it actually makes it a really nice slicey knife that's a tall blade, I mean, for this for this little knife. And, um, doo -doo -doo. put it on our little bridge here for a second while I adjust something. Better. Okay, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a choil. Let me see if I can get it right up in there, yeah. The choil is about 2.5 millimeters at its thickest. Now, I've only been doing this for a little while, but that does seem to be about the average toil thickness at that part right there. It quickly comes down. Ooh, look how dirty it is from my pocket. I carry it a lot. Uh, it quick, well, you gotta have that hand behind there or else you totally lose it, huh? It quickly comes down to a very thin edge. 
right there. I believe that that's the term for like in between the, the I believe that's called the Ricasso. I'm not total. I, I have to look into that. I'm not sure. I'm not smart enough to know that yet. Okay. Um, oh, well, well, I have it out. It obviously does have a sharpening troil. It has a, a very good uh, depth to it, so you can get many sharpenings out of it. Ergos. It's boxy, obviously. I mean, that's the first thing I think probably people notice. It's boxy. And I love it. Everyone says if you look up knife in the dictionary, this would be the knife that you would see there. Some people think that's stupid. I think that's really cool. Um, the G10 is good G10. It's, it's uh, to me, it compares to my Para 3, my uh, G10. It's, it's grippy, but not over grippy. It's like slippy grippy. <laughs> um, what else can I tell you? The, the blade shape is, it's, you know, because it's boxy, yes, but it's tall, and it has this chamfering on the edges, if you can see. You see here? So, while it doesn't feel like it's necessarily swelling in your hand, it definitely, you, you know, you can, you can tell the, how do I say this? It, it doesn't swell but it doesn't not either uh does that make any sense it's not just a box it's not just flat you know sharp edges it's chamfered very well and, and smartly um the thickness of the of the uh handle which i believe i just did at 14 now oh no i'm sorry 11 14 was the new review knife so 11 millimeter handle uh, versus the height. Well, of course, it depends where you take it. Uh, I'll do it right in the middle, though, just because. Uh, 23.7, let's say 24, because it could be anywhere. You know, if I took it back here at the way ass, it'd be 28. Uh, so I think t uh, 24 is a good uh, average, I guess I would say. And I think that numbers aside, uh, in just looking at it and feeling it, the width and the height work well. It's thin, but it's tall enough to fill your hand. And that tall that that tallness is there with that chamfering. It, it works all together to give you a really good grip. Um, let's see here. Oh, action. It's got caged ceramic bearings. Let me see what I can show you. I should have cleaned this. I carry this a lot. It's, it's one of the knives that's almost always in my pocket, even if I have several others that I'm reviewing or whatever, but I, I just love it. Yeah, so you can kind of see the caged. Let me, uh, let me... I just so happen to have, okay, hang on, guys. sorry about that, I just happened to have a canned air out here and I, I figured I'd blow out the uh, the bearings a little bit. Man, I need to get better at Spidey flicking this knife now that I learned it can do it. Anyways, uh, let's look back at the bearings again now that I've kind of cleaned them up. I always make that noise when I zoom, I bet you everyone loves it. Yeah, see, look at those. It's no wonder it's so smooth. You, I mean, every movement I make is huge. Um, yeah, so it's caged ceramic wall bearings. I believe it has a, like a track that the bearings are also in. Um, I haven't actually kind of see. Yeah, you can kind of see the steel liner that goes up up to under the bearing. I bet you that's where the track is that it's dedicated for those bearing balls. It's also a steel, I mean steel, a ceramic uh, detent. Uh, it's nice and firmly in there. Uh, the uh, I'm going a little 
out of order here, but the thumb studs stand above the handle, just slightly, okay? They're titanium anodized thumb studs. The second you break that detent, which is not difficult, okay? It, it holds it in safely, but it's not difficult to break it. You can just tap it. Give it a little tappy. You're going to get the blade out. And if you don't get your other, if you get your finger, get your other fingers out of the way, it'll actually open. See? It's very fun to fidget with, even for just a thumb stud knife. Uh, thumb studs, look at all that. Oh, that's because you know what it is? I used the canned air and it blew a bunch of oil out. Maybe they might have over oiled it a little tiny bit. Anyways, uh, what was I saying? I don't remember. The, oh, the thumb studs are titanium. They stand uh, anodized titanium. They stand probably flicks out easy. I said. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Man, I'm not good at that. Ceramic detent. Um, the clip. Let's talk about the clip. Everyone talks about this clip. It's no surprise from Ben Peterson that this clip is the way it is, but it is a beautiful clip. First of all, the screws are recessed. Second of all, the clip itself is recessed into the G10. It's a wraparound clip. It's true, I mean, true as deep carry as you can deep carry. Uh, this is a cleaning cloth, but let's just try to maybe pretend like it's a pocket for a second. It's a little soft, so that might not be easy. There we go. I mean, in pocket, uh, this is what you see. As for the branding on the, on the clip, that real small little word there, not only do I like it, I think it's it's not anything. It doesn't say uh, machete or uh, you know Voorhees version or something. You know, no one's gonna really know unless they're a knife person. They're not gonna know what a clip that says banter is, and they, you have no sight of that knife whatsoever. Lanyard hole. Uh, this is a point of contention for me because I have personal opinions, and then there's reality. I hate lanyard holes, especially when you see them on the display side. I really do prefer the, the lanyard hole to be in the back somehow. However, and I've read several other people's opinions on this specific knife, I do realize that there's cost involved with, with you know making that happen. The price point of this knife, before I go any further, I believe is exactly a $108. Okay, so there aren't, I'm not saying that they cut corners because it is a well-made, well-manufactured, high-quality piece of Wii machinery. We did a Wii job. But, you know, they obviously couldn't do everything high-end to, or, you know, they, they did a lot of things that you would find in $400, $500 knives in a $100 knife. So I guess I can't complain so much about that, but I just wish that that wasn't there. I really do. But that's just my opinion. Uh, let's see here. The lock, it's steel liners. No, let me rephrase. It's a steel liner nested on the lock bar side. There's the lockup. Perfect lockup. Um, as opposed, so when you're looking at it, you know, as opposed to having a, a, a huge cutout right here, where your finger can hit that bar, you have some, like, I guess the scalloping or jimping here, so that your thumb can grip it and push it over. I've read somebody saying that, well, with, with, with locks like that, when you're really pressing hard, there's a chance that you could pull, you could pull that over. And uh, listen, 
if you are somehow using this knife in a way that you are able to work so hard to that your finger pulls that lock bar while cutting over and somehow that blade comes out because it's not gonna pop easy uh, I, I don't know I mean you could see the mark on my, just just by if I do it purposely okay so it's the chances of you working with this knife and having that bar get moved I can't I can't see I can't see how that's possible but that's another you know that's an opinion I like it this way um, you know I know it has to stand a little prouder than the uh, than the scale so that your thumb can hit it but I don't on the just I don't like big cutouts for the for the lock bar and I can access it just fine uh, as far as the lines on it I love how it goes smoothly there there's no you know whatever that thing's called where there's like a gap um, really squared off rounded corner though uh, the blade is perfectly straight but man, those that because of that those titanium uh, pivots, not pivots, titanium thumb studs are just in the right place at the right height. With this system, it is just the easiest thumb stud system I've ever seen. All you've got to do is get it past that detent. That's not that bad, and the fact that you can do a little spidey flick on it should show you that you know most thumb stud knives. If you can spidey flick, well, whatever. I like that a lot. There are certain knives in the five, six hundred dollar range that provide anodized thumb studs. That well, that provide an, an, an anodized thumb stud that doesn't do that. Um, okay. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. I went over the clip. It is super deep carry. Uh, I love that it's recessed into the G10. It's not going anywhere. That means that that clip is not going to slide around. You know, sometimes if it's above the G10 and, and, and screwed in, you can, you can eventually get some play. This thing is not only secured by the screws, but the, the G10 surrounding it is holding it as well. Um, the, the G10 being the way it is, you know, it is G10. As I keep saying, so it is grippy. It is going to do what G10 does to pockets, period. But with a decent clip and the not so super aggressive G10, the more like, I don't know how to describe it, the smooth grippy G10, uh, it shouldn't be terribly bad on your pants. Uh, as I said, liner lock. I, I see, and I'm going to fail every time I try to do the spidey flick for you. I really love it. Jimping on the top, small amount, just enough to stop your thumb if you need it though. I don't want any more than that. To me, this is a nearly perfect EDC knife. Uh, as far as city carry, it passes the palm test, as Ray would say on everyday city carry. Uh, the blade length is 2.9 inches. I'm almost positive I said that, uh, which means that in most areas most jurisdictions most jurisdictions this knife should be legal i'm not a lawyer it does lock so you know you have to know what you can carry legally but as far as blade length laws it is under the three inch blade length so you're good there um overall uh you know that's all for my specs and notes on it I love this knife. I carry it all the time, pretty much. I love it more now that I figured out I can spidey flick it. I don't know why I never realized that. Uh, I don't have the black one, but I don't need the black one. I just love this one. You've got the um, spacers there. Man, I've got to clean out that dust. Yeah, but what beautiful, the, those caged bearings are what actually cause that, that super 
and the and the ceramic the tent is what causes that super action. But that's it, guys. All I have to say, Ben Peterson, great job on the design. We thank you for making it with him. Uh, if you can grab this guy, grab him. He's he's as of right this second, I believe, out of stock, but I have. It on good authority it will be back soon and I'm almost positive it will be back in general in fact I'm positive it'll be back in general uh, it comes with a zipper case with some pretty cool stickers inside including a sticker of this knife which is pretty sweet uh, alright guys that's gonna be it for this review I'm trying to keep it under 15 minutes and that's it if we are at 12 uh, no we're not because I've paused it but whatever so we're probably over 15 minutes. I love this knife. If you like it too, you should get it. It's great in and out of pocket. Perfect EDC shape. Great legality reasons. Great slicer. Cuts perfectly. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything.